Story number eight, and the top story that made into the meter this week. What has the U.S. learned from being in the Middle East for so long? Uh, there are some stories that made it in, but uh, this story is at the top because the Middle East problem uh, seems to be getting worse. The, the more, the more the relationships, uh, the dealings, people saying that the Middle East can't be trusted, places like Iran, and uh, like you see what happened in Iraq with the uh, uh, with the ousted Saddam. And thinking that this was how the Iraqi citizens would uh, would be able to live peacefully. And then you see the strategy of uh, when well, they were talking about weapons of mass destruction. Where these weapons were. And they, they still never found any weapons of mass destruction. You see Saddam Hussein uh, pretty much killed for his crimes against humanity. And uh, now the Iraqi citizens are still uh, having problems with their government protesters. They're saying that the, that their government has taken everything away from them. And uh, it seems to be getting worse and worse. So you see places like Syria, Iran, who they're saying is sponsoring terrorism. There was even a story about how China may be selling anonymous killer drones to the Middle East. And... Uh, even when it comes to Iran's uranium nuclear, trying to get nuclear, uh, the, the nuclear deal settled. And, and this is just, it's just blown up all over the place. So uh, it, 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 it doesn't seem to be getting any better. And this is pivotal to foreign policy, foreign relations. And this is a hot topic because we've seen the Trump administration dealing with Saudi Arabia uh, going to Syria, protecting the oil fields, pulling troops out. It has people wondering if we're on shaky ground or even if, if, even if this administration is acting in the better interest of the people. Now, they are telling that his, his, he's telling his base one thing, but they're doing another. They're dealing with a country that has a, that is pretty much it, it's all on the, the radar that they've actually killed a journalist, Khashoggi, and uh, this president is still over there shaking hands. So this uh, a story like this, when it comes to the Middle East, what the United States has learned, obviously, uh, with this administration, uh, the way it's been handling business, maybe maybe they need to do a review on what they can do or what can be accomplished in the Middle East. But right now, uh, when you talk about chaos and uh, craziness, it, it, it's everywhere. Iran's network of, of influence is a story that made it that I, I came across seems to be growing in the Middle East, according to, to one report. You can even look at uh, even with the terrorists, uh, uh, Osama bin Laden. You see uh, one, uh, we see the killing of an ISIS leader, then another one rising. The, these stories seem to be getting bigger and bigger, but you, you, you wonder where are these people getting their weapons from? Who's supporting them? There even there's even talk about how an ex Twitter employee was accused of spying for Saudi Arabia, Michigan, Michigan man accused of funneling trade secrets to his brother in Iran, rockets fired on Iraq base with U.S. troops but no one injured, according to the Pentagon. You see these stories. U.S. believes reports that Turkey misused U.S. supplied weapons in Syria incursion. They're saying that this is credible. What's going on in the Middle East? It was just destined to make it to the top because we headed into, as we head into the election season 2020, this will be a big, big concern is how will whoever is elected president or if Trump gets another term, how will they deal with the growing problem that we have in the Middle East? It, it, it does not seem to be getting any better. Even with, you could even look at Libya, some Russia, even China has been doing deals with countries and I mean, places in Africa dealing with the Middle East. The East is just is a problem. Even even the Middle East is a problem. But you, no matter what, no matter which way the coin tur turns, somebody will have to uh, figure out how to manage all this. And it all and it all has to do with foreign policy, trade policies, sanctions. They've tried everything to keep. Uh, you could even take it even to Benghazi with the Clinton dealings. This is this is just one big problem, and then they have problems with the uh, with our neighbors, uh, Mexico. So you you can see that that the Washington and Congress will have their hands full, and that's why story number eight 
not even just the Middle East, but foreign policy period, uh, trade policy. How will will this will they be able to, even with taking oil? Like uh, some people say, they don't want Syrian oil, Dilly. It's just so much. Uh, even with the United United Nations, you see Brexit, uh, England having an interest in trying to figure out their country stance now. So uh, you can you can see there's a lot going on in Washington. A lot that has to do with foreign policy. That's why story number eight is at the top. This is an important story that is not only developing but it's ongoing. Uh, every week something breaks off, something happens, some soldiers may get killed, something may go wrong, somebody may pull troops from one area, go to the next. Story number eight has all the uh, ingredients and substance for to cook up a good conversation about foreign policy. There's a lot of good books out there about Al-Qaeda, uh, about uh, uh, foreign administrations, how they've dealt with the Middle East. And you don't even forget about North Korea. I mean, uh, you can't forget about them. So uh, foreign policy definitely is a big thing, but the Middle East and even the East in general will definitely, definitely strike a, uh, some chords on the, on the piano when people are playing into the uh, who how to get votes because uh, this is a big this is a big thing if you're not concerned now you just just watch the prices of oil and the stock market when things go that wrong something may happen across the across the ocean these all affect what happens uh, in the United States and uh, this is why story number eight is at the top here the meeting will be Brian West where I've done my duty I've got through the top eight. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. Like I said, if you want to check out the stories that almost made it in, did make it in, you may have your own program, your own research network. Who knows what you got going on? Just go to the website, check out the stories. They I uh, upload them in our Twitter feed every week. You can see what's going on. And you can check them out. Uh, like I said, I just stay in the middle, uh, just uh, navigating the news for you. I just have to. Uh, so I make sure I say that every week. And I like to thank all the journalists and the people who keep us informed. They deserve most of the credit. That is, a t It is a tough job. And it's tough being the meter because I have to read a lot of depressing stories. Sometimes I find happy stories. But uh, there's a lot of bad news sometimes. But I, I try to stick to some stories that are that are help will help you out. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you want to help out, go to the website. Figure out what's going on. You can watch something. There's entertainment on there. Uh, books, all types of stuff. So check it out. Uh, go to the website. Do your own research. Uh, like I said, if you want to contribute to help out, M-E-T-H-O-D, the number 8, I-N-C.com, Method80.com, where you can buy something, click on something, watch something, read something, order a sponsor program. Every little bit counts. I am out of here. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. To the media, it'll be Brian West. Have a good week, everybody. Peace. Have no fear, fellow citizens. The